Hi, it's Luke with Out of Darts. Today I'm gonna to show you our top tips, tricks, and a little maintenance guide for the Lynx by Orion Blasters. I just love this blaster. And a few tools you might want for everything I'm gonna show you in this video. You're gonna want a little of the slug slime lubricant that came with your blaster kit or something similar. A pliers, a number two screwdriver, a cloth or a paper towel, you can really use either. And that's pretty much it. So number one, storing and caring for your blaster. Now, if you are printing in PLA like we are because we think it's a great plastic, um, you do not want to leave this in a hot car. The material is very durable and we have shipped tens of thousands of parts here in the warehouse and it is extremely rare to see a problem with a warped part. However, on a hot summer day in California or Texas or Hawaii or really anywhere in the South, if you leave this in your car where your car can get 150, 160 degrees Fahrenheit, you could experience warping. So that's number one, don't leave your blaster in a hot car. Number two, let's swap a barrel. So the barrel is very easy to swap. You've got two screws right on this side and on this side. One really cool thing is that these are plastic so they don't scratch your barrel as you're working. All you do is loosen those two screws and you can pull your barrel right out. This allows you to swap to a longer barrel if you're trying to increase or decrease the FPS or maybe you're just opening it up so you can get your scar off there. Um, while we're talking about the scar, the uh, scar-like barrel that we are including here is just a press fit. If you ever need this to be tighter, if you find it's not tight enough for you, all you need to do is take a tiny bit, bit of masking tape or you could use packing tape or electrical tape and just put a little piece in there to increase that bond, but it should fit pretty snug as is. To reinstall the barrel, you're just going to slide that back in. You wanna make sure it seats all the way into the bottom. I usually point this up towards myself like this so that the barrel is falling with gravity, but I will show it to you like this so you can see, and we're just gonna tighten those until they're reasonably tight, but you shouldn't use a tool, only your fingers on the thumb screw. Number three, let's swap the spring. Now to get at this spring, you're not going to get at it from the rear, you're actually gonna to go to the front of the blaster. So first you're going to remove this pin. If you have any problems grabbing the pin, you can always use a tool like a pliers, but this one has been in and out enough and the fit is just perfect. Set that aside, or alternatively, Dan built these really great spots to just drop your pins in. So when you pull the two pins out, they can literally sit there safely. So if you're doing this in the field, you don't drop the pins on the ground. To continue removing the spring, you're gonna pull the front rail out, including this part. And then you're going to slightly bend this up, the transfer bar, and enough to pull that out. And at that point, you can literally just reach in, grab your spring, and when you wanna put the spring back in, you just drop it right back in place and reverse those operations. You may need to kind of hold the back as you do this. I normally would do this all vertically facing up at you, but since I'm trying to do it for camera, it's slightly different. And of course you're gonna to need to do the reverse here where you kind of lift up the transfer bar like that. Don't bend too hard on it because it is just made of aluminum and you'll get that back in place where it locks in on that notch. Then put your parts back together. And this is one of the best parts about the Lynx is how easy this is to do in the field really, really fast. You'll notice I could probably get this spring swapped in about 30 seconds. And I'm sure there are people out there that can do it in about 10. Number four, let's tune our pusher air seal. Now, if you haven't built your own blaster, Back here is the actual pusher. I'm gonna prime the blaster so I can move this around to show it on camera. And this is essentially what creates the barrel seal for firing the dart. And it's really important that this is a good seal, but not too good or you're gonna have a frustrating time to prime it. Now, one way to check if you're getting a good air seal is to plug your barrel with your finger up here, nice and firmly, prime the blaster and then fire and you should get a couple seconds of hang time. Now, some of them will hang longer or shorter depending on how much lubricant your tolerance is and everything, but as long as you get a couple seconds, you're not going to get any better performance by say getting 20 or 30 seconds. So when you have that in the farthest back position, you can take a screwdriver and you can actually adjust, you can dial that in or out. Now, if you tighten, meaning this way, you're going to increase your air seal. And if you go the 
other way, you loosen the screw, you're going to decrease the air seal. And what's happening there is you're essentially compressing that O-ring together, which makes it wider. And you're gonna to wanna to do this in very, very small increments. So I'm going to actually go ahead and, and truly do this because I think the air seal might be leaking just a little bit there, even though in reality, the performance wise was just fine. So I've tightened that just slightly and we'll try again, see if I get any better performance on the actual air seal itself. It might have been pretty similar, but you'll get the idea. Number five, since we already did the pusher air seal, let's do the plunger head air seal. If you prime the blaster and slide forward, you will see there is a very similar O-ring there. To get at this one, we actually do need to take the blaster apart. So I'm going to again, pull the front pin, pull the front of the blaster off, push the transfer bar up. And this time I'm going to pull the entire assembly apart to get at the actual plunger. So this is the same concept here. We are going to tighten this to increase the air seal or make the air seal tighter, or we can loosen this screw and it will decrease the air seal or at least decrease the size of this part. Now, the way you're gonna to wanna to kind of test this is you want, you want these parts to have just a little bit of holding holding power here. Not so hard that you have to yank on it, but not so hard, so loose that it just falls right out. Now to actually adjust this, Dan the designer has built in a little trap hex here that you can actually use to adjust this. So with one pliers, I can essentially tighten this and I'm going this way because I want it a little bit tighter. And then I'm gonna go back and actually test my air seal again. I think I could still go a little bit tighter overall. So again, I'm gonna go just like a quarter turn at a time. You don't wanna to go too far. And to me, just one more little backed out piece. And that's feeling pretty good. A tiny amount of resistance, a little bit of pull, but not too much. And then from there, you can just reassemble the blaster the way it came apart. And that's all there is to adjusting that. It's pretty quick and easy to get in there. It's one of the best parts about a Lynx is how fast you can break it down and maintenance it. And you can see I have actually, through those two small changes, we've got a little bit better of a seal overall, I think. Number six, let's clean and maintain the plunger tube. You may find that over time you get a little bit of dirt or dust or maybe a little bit of 3D printed muck in there. Or if you've got one of those colored springs, um, which we don't sell by the way, you might find that you have colored spring junk all over in there. I'm not a huge fan of that. So let's take this apart and we'll actually clean it out. We're gonna remove that back pin. We're gonna store our pin in our nice little storage spot. Again, bend that transfer bar up. We'll pull the spring out and we'll go to the back here and then we'll actually pull the entire eight inch plunger tube out. Now this one is not a great example because this blaster hasn't seen as many hours of use, but from here, all you're gonna to wanna to do is um, take a paper towel or you can use a terry towel, whichever you prefer and you can kind of basically push through, and you can do this a couple times as needed, um, and you can just clean up any gunk that's in there. I like to just wedge a large enough piece of paper towel that I can shove the whole thing through. Here, I'm gonna use the spring as a follower, and that's looking nice and clean. Likewise, I can take the plunger head itself, and I'm going to wipe off all of the excess oil I can get. I would generally probably not do that with a paper towel and actually do that with a terry cloth, so you have less likelihood of getting um, little bits of fiber inside your plunger tube. And then we'll do the same thing for the actual turnaround here. We're just gonna remove all the oil that we can wipe off of there. After I've done that, I'm gonna take my slug slime and we're just gonna put a few drops on that. We'll get it on the plunger head as well. I like to do this anytime I've been in a dirty environment, I will do this and, um, and clean it all up. And then we're simply going to reverse the directions and we'll reinstall everything. And there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I would love to hear from you. What tips and tricks and maintenance things have I missed on this blaster? This is not a normal channel video. This is really for our customers. So we're dedicated to updating and re-uploading this video since it's on our second channel. And if someone comes up with a good enough idea, we will actually film it and we will add it to this video and update it for future customers and viewers. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm out of darts.